I'm Dr. Radha, a clinical dietitian, and I'm here with a new method of presentation during this period of lockdown. Thanks to my good friend, Dr. Rajiv, who helped me with this presentation on Prezi. Now let's talk about diet and immunity. What actually works? If there's anything that the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us, it's that our immune system, more than any drug or vaccine, holds the key to our health. While we all adjust to the new norms of social distancing and frequent meticulous washing, is there anything we can do to boost our immunity naturally? One thing is for sure, immunity is not a superpower that you can develop overnight. You are not Peter Parker getting bitten by a radioactive spider and turning into Spider-Man. Aside from our genes and exposure to various immunogenic stimuli in childhood, our immunity is profoundly influenced by our diets and the trillions of bacteria hosted by our body, collectively called the microbiome. Since our microbiome primarily resides in our intestines, it follows that our immunity is exquisitively dependent on our diet and gut health. Our immune cells are affected by various nutrients and foods including dietary fiber, vitamin D, zinc and vitamin C. Our nutritional status depends on the protein, carbohydrate, fat and energy in food along with adequate vitamin and mineral intake. When your diet is deficient in protein, it reduces your capacity of fighting infections and delays wound healing. Poor nutrition can affect skin and intestinal mucous membranes, which are primary barriers to infection, as well as the microbiome. And the T cells responsible for immunity like B and T cells. Vitamins are essential for many cellular processes, especially in the immune system. The next vitamin is vitamin A, also known as the anti-inflammatory vitamin and has an important role in the development and regulation of immunity. Vitamin A deficiency correlates with the risk of developing tuberculosis and other infections, particularly in children. Vitamin C helps control infections, especially respiratory tract infections ranging from common cold to pneumonia. We need vitamin C to make collagen, a fibrous protein that is second only to bone as a scaffold in our body and is vital to heal wounds. It is a powerful antioxidant that may prevent cancer and damage from environmental pollutants, particularly cigarette smoking. The next vitamin, vitamin D is both a nutrient we eat and a hormone our body makes with the help of sunlight. Apart from keeping the bones healthy, vitamin D can reduce cancer cell growth, help control infections like TB and influenza and reduce infl inflammation. Low levels can increase the likelihood of autoimmune diseases. Although studies exploring the role of vitamin D in preventing lung infections have yielded mixed results, a large meta-analysis suggested that daily or weekly vitamin D supplementation lowers the risk of acute respiratory tract infections. This effect 
particularly prominent for very deficient individuals. The finding from this large meta-analysis can raise the question whether low vitamin D levels may also increase the risk of or severity of COVID-19 infection. Although there is no direct evidence yet on this issue because this is a new disease, avoiding low levels of vitamin D makes sense for this and other reasons. The best sources of vitamin D are fatty fish and fish liver oils. Smaller amounts are found in egg yolks and cheese. Many foods are fortified with vitamin D like dairy products and cereals. Taking a supplementation of 1000 to 2000 international units per day may be reasonable. The next zinc is a trace mineral meaning that the body only needs small amounts and yet it is necessary for almost 100 enzymes to carry out our vital chemical reactions. It is a major player in the creation of DNA, growth of cells, building proteins, healing damaged tissues and supporting a healthy immune system. Even mild zinc deficiency can slow down the activity of lymphocytes neutrophils and macrophages that protect the body from virus and bacteria. The elderly who may have low zinc intakes from a poor appetite and at, are at increased risk for infections. In them, higher zinc needs and poor appetite mean Supplements are more effective than relying on food intake alone. Meat, poultry and seafood are rich in zinc. Some plant foods like legumes and whole grains are good sources, but they also contain phytates that can bind the mineral and lower its absorption. Zinc supplements are available as pills. A registered dietitian can help evaluate one's diet and determine if zinc intake is low. Zinc may shorten the, dura the duration of a cold. A Cochrane review of clinical trials found that while zinc pills did not prevent colds, but if taken within a day of the onset of sore throat and sniffles, the pill can tame the severity. The pill form was important because the zinc needed to dissolve slowly to coat mouth and the throat when a cold virus thrives. Individual nutrients are consumed in the context of overall dietary patterns and so diet diversity is essential. Colorful, nutrient-rich whole foods can improve gut microbial health. A high-fiber diet favors the microbiome diversity and production of short-chain fatty acids that may also prevent pathologies outside the gut. A long-term fiber-rich diet has shown to improve lung function and to lower the risk for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. As we navigate through these unprecedented times, many are wondering how to safely shop, prepare food to minimize the transmission of COVID-19 and stay healthy too. Some of the steps are practice social distancing and hand washing. Maximize immune supportive nutrients from food. Go sparingly with sugar, salt and fat. Exercise in moderation. Encourage healthy gut flora. Be mindful of alcohol intake. Avoid smoking. And finally, laugh, sleep and rest. 
research consistently shows that laughing helps activate natural killer cells, secretory immunoglobulin A levels and gamma interferons, all measures of immune function. Although we do not have concrete evidence regarding specific dietary factors that can reduce risk of acute infections like COVID-19, we do know that focusing on nutrient-rich foods and healthy lifestyle behaviors can help you and your family stay a step ahead in keeping your immune system strong. Thank you.